Hey guys, welcome back. In this video I'd like to talk about conditional rendering in React. So we already saw conditional rendering with the example of showing error messages for invalid data input. So if, for example, if you type something wrong in the input box, if it was an invalid date, we would actually show an error message. Now this is not the case anymore, but if you go to the previous video, we talked about validation, you could see the example for that. So let's create another component here. I'm gonna call it holidays modal. And this is also going to help us explore the idea of lists in React. So let's import React from React. And I'd like to show you a different way of exporting components from React. So in the past, what we would do is we would typically create a constant. For instance, in this case, it makes sense to call it holidays model. And then you have your function, right? Um, and of course, this could also be a class for a class-based component. But let's say we stick to functional components. And then we'll basically export holidays model as a default export. But in React, we can also take advantage of ES6 modules. And the module syntax also allows us to export anonymous functions. So instead of actually creating a constant, you could just simply export a default function. In this case, it's going to be an arrow function. And it's going to accept the props. And it's going to return a JSX or React element. And in this case, I'd like the element to be a model. So let's go back to the Bulma documentation here. Let's go to Docs. If you click on Components, you could see that there's a section for models. And if you scroll down, you can also see an example of a model card. So basically, it's a model that has a title, it has a body, as well as a footer with a bunch of buttons. So we're going to use that example. So let's just go ahead and copy that. I'm going to go back and just paste it in and adjust the spacing a little bit. Okay. And next, we also need to remember to replace class with class name because we're dealing with JSX here. And this is basically extended JavaScript syntax, but we need to stick to JavaScript conventions here. So we need to use class name instead of class. And the same thing also applies, for example, if you have a label in an input. Oftentimes, you would have a for attribute on the label. Well, that's not going to work in JavaScript, so you need to replace that with HTML4. Okay, hope that makes sense. And we talked about that before. If you're not sure about that, go back to the previous lessons in the playlist, and there you'll find more information about that and a lot more about JSX. But let's move on here. So this looks pretty good. I'm just going to put some content for now. And this will basically give us a modal. So if we go back to index, I'm going to import the modal. And let's call it holidays model. Import from holidays model. Okay. If you go to the bottom, let's just put it below the controls. Holidays model. Okay. Close it off. And if you go back to the application, you're not going to see it. Now, the reason you don't see it, probably already mentioned it, but Bulma is a JavaScript free library or JavaScript free CSS framework. So it doesn't have any JavaScript dependencies. So if you want to add JavaScript behavior to Bulma, you would need to do it manually. And you can actually see a warning here. They mention that Bulma does not have any JavaScript interactions. So you need to implement the JavaScript functionality yourself. And this is actually perfect for us because we have a React framework. I don't want to pull in anything like jQuery or any other dependencies, which would typically be the case with libraries like Bootstrap or Foundation, which is one of the reasons why I chose Bulma. So, here we need to provide a functionality here but the idea is basically if you put a class of is active class of is active on the model and actually you need to put it on the outer div basically the wrapper model if you go back you're going to see the model right here so the way that you display the model is basically by um, conditionally displaying or uh, conditionally using the is active class Okay, so back in index.js, what we're gonna do is, let's add a new property to the state. The idea here is basically we might have a property, let's say show holidays, and by default, it's going to be false. Um, the little typo right there, show holidays. And like I said, by default, it's going to be false because we don't want to show it any model when you land on the page, right? So when you go to this page, the model is gonna be hidden. But for example, once you click on a button, it's going to be shown. And we actually need to add that button, right? Now that I realize that. So let's add a button here. Let's add a class name of 
actually it's going to be a string, let's add button is small, let's also add is rounded, is light, um, and that's pretty much it for now. Let's also put some text in there, let's just say holidays. Okay, let's see how that looks like. Now that doesn't look really good. Uh, if you go back, I think what we're gonna do is, of course, the one thing you could do is you could add levels. If you go to the documentation in Bulma, there's also a section under layout, it's called level. And it basically allows you to create a level that has items that are vertically centered. And also allows you to center those elements. In fact, we've used that to display you know, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So you could definitely use that in order to um, align the elements vertically. So in this case, you would have a heading as well as the button, but it's a bit of a hustle. In this case, I think it's just fine to add another inline style. So let's add an object here. I'm just gonna do margin, and let's also give it five pixels on the top, zero on the right, zero at the bottom and let's maybe add it 10 on the left. And it looks pretty good, so this is the button. So the idea is once you click on the button, it's gonna open up the model. I'm also going to add a new property on the model. So let's pass a property, we might call it active. And that's gonna determine whether the model needs to be active. And the active property is going to match the show holidays property on the state. So I'm gonna add it right there and I'm also gonna um, destructure it from the state. So that's going to be passed down to the holidays model. In fact, I'm going to also destructure that um, that property off the props object because I don't need the whole props object. I only need the show holidays attribute, okay? So that we can actually use it directly. And in fact, let's see what happens next. Do we have any errors? No, nope, everything seems fine. So again, we just simply pass the show holidays property down to the modal. Now, by default, like I said, it's false, but we also can include a condition here. And this is another example of how you can basically add conditional classes to, a, to an element or a component for that matter. But instead of a string, I'm going to use an expression, a JSX expression. We always need to include the modal class because whether the model is visible or not, we always need to have that class for styling purposes. But we also going to have another expression in there. And we're basically going to say, in fact, I think I made a typo. We call the property active, right? So I'm gonna to stick to active. So we need the active property. So if the active property is true, then we're going to have is active class. And notice I also put a space in there. This is basically going to concatenate modal string with is active string. And that's just basically going to give us two classes, okay? And then you can also have a column. So this is just a normal ternary conditional expression that you would typically use in JavaScript. But basically, like I said, the idea is if active is true, we get the is active class, otherwise just an empty string, okay? And if you save that, so the modal is not visible, but for example, if we go back to index, and I'm gonna set show holidays to true. Let's see what happens. And we get the modal, okay? So when it's false, the modal is not visible, but if it's true, we get the modal. Now the next thing is we already have a button here, which is basically supposed to control the modal. So once you click on the button, it's supposed to open up the modal. So how do we implement that functionality? Now we could actually add an event to the button so let's add another on click event and we would need to pass a function to that event so in this case i'm just going to call a local function let's call it uh, on handle holidays toggle or something the name is going to make sense later but basically the idea is you're toggling the active property on the model so let's add that method and I'm also going to use class properties syntax because we need to have access to the this keyword and by default it's not accessible with normal class functions. I'm just going to use that experimental syntax that we talked about before. And let's do this set state and we're going to pass a new state object. In this example, I'm specifically targeting show holidays 
and I want to set it to whatever the show holidays is not. So for example, if by default it's false, when you click on the button, I want to set it to true. And if it's true, I want to set it to false. That's what it does, okay? And this should already work. So let's go back, let's click on the button. There we go, the model pops up. Now, of course, we also have a button to close it here. So I think we're gonna pass that method actually uh, this one handle holidays toggle. We're going to pass it down to holidays model and I'm going to call it, um, let's see, on holidays toggle. And we're going to pass the reference to that function. If you go back to the model here, we're going to expect a new property. Um, in fact, we call it on holidays toggle, but you could also call it because we're in the, in the context of holidays here anyways, it probably makes sense to call it on toggle. It's just a simpler convention. And let's also do the following. So we have a button that basically closes the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, when you click on that button, we're going to have the on toggle function execute. And when that execute, that's basically going to invoke the handle holidays toggle method. And it's basically just going to handle the show holidays property. So back in here, if you open up the modal and you click on the cross, that's gonna close it. Now the other thing is oftentimes with modals, um, it'll be desirable if we we're also able to click outside of the modal. So on the black overlay, that's basically behind the modal, so we want to be able to click on that overlay and also close the model. Now that's not the case right now. The only way to close it would be to click on the cross with the X um, image or icon. In this case, we have a div here that basically refers to the background or overlay of the model that's basically just behind it. Now we could also add another on click here, right? And we're just going to call the same on toggle function, right? And if you add that, now if you go back, launch the modal, click outside, and it's going to close it. Well, that's basically it for the modal. In the next video, we're going to actually display the list of holidays. So I hope you stick around. I'll see you next time.